I'm going to sleep for a week. You two must be exhausted. We're going to get to sleep in our own bed. What are you going to do about the loot, Mr. Well, uh, we'll leave it here tonight. We'll put it in the vault in the morning. I've never seen so much money in one place. Do you mind if I take a peek? Sure, take a look. Oh, Matt. This one's for you. Oh, thank you. And freeway. This one's for freeway. Darling, mm-hmm. why don't you and I get some of the familiar pillows? What a good idea. Which one of these do you want upstairs? Uh, that one. Hey, you folks must be putting me on. This is play money. <laughs> certainly is, but it's not ours to play with. I mean, it's toy money. It's good for building hotels on boardwalk, but that's it. What are you talking about? Well, take a look. Jefferson. Monopoly money. I don't know what you're talking about. I slept perfectly. You're the one who talked and turned all night. Oh, I kept dreaming about London and the box hunting. Really? Mm-hmm. Let me catch the box. Good morning, folks. Or should I say good afternoon? You can say good morning or good afternoon, Max, if you just put the coffee on the table. You got it. Oh, coffee. Mm. Mrs. H, you got a call this morning. Oh, no. A baron dystopic. What did he say? He said he'd call tomorrow. Didn't leave his number. Sounds important. Thanks, Max. Come on. Um... I wonder how he's going to feel when he finds out he's been demoted to King of Marvin Gardens. I think I'll give George a call in England. Do you still think the money was Swiss at the club? It had to be. I kept my eye on that briefcase from the moment we left. What's the area code for London? 011441. 011441? Are you sure? I'm positive. Surely you don't suspect George. Well, he was a little blasé about giving up the money. Yeah. But you've known him for years. Yeah, well, maybe you can give us some idea of what happened. Any answer? No luck. Well, I certainly hope George will know something. Because if he doesn't, I don't know anyone who will. Are you sure you got that right? Jennifer Hart. H-A-R-T. Heart. Unlifted. And travel halfway across the world to lose her here in Pennsylvania. Well, I reached George in Scotland. And? He caught four salmon and a bad cold, and he has no idea how the money was switched, but he said he'll look into it. What's the matter? That man. He was at the Kensington Club that night. He looks like he's out of an old movie. He's coming over here. Forgive me, but surely you're the lady who confounded the Kensington Club with an unsunny judgment of roulette. I don't see how this becomes your business, Mr. Uh... Hegland, Mr. Hart. Nigel Hegland, president of the British American Trading Company. And you're quite right when you say that your people's charming practice it is none of my business. <laughs> but will you not, as it were, gratify the curiosity of a stranger? Wait a minute. Dozens of people saw me. They weren't even my kids. No, of course not. They were the property of a baron who subsequently vanished. Am I right? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Hagelin. Even American practice has its limits. No, of course, sir. No, of course. One more question, and it goes without saying that you need not answer. Madam, have you succeeded in locating the baron and reuniting him with his money? Well, as uh, you say in your country, we have the situation well in hand. Capital, capital. <laughs> All well done, sir. Hey. Mm. Excuse me. Little Ben, reminding me that it's time to take my medication. Touch of malaria. 
souvenir of India. <laughs> I'll tell you how much I've enjoyed this little chin chin. Well, it certainly was nice meeting you. My pleasure, I assure you, madam, Mr. Hart. What was that all about? Thank you. I don't know. But he was lying to us. How? He didn't tell us anything. At that meeting, that night at the Kensington Club, I was made president of the British American Trading Company. Thank you. 